Hi, I'm Jim Collison, live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup Strengths Explorer Series, recorded on February 28th, 2019. Strengths Explorer is a podcast series that dives deep into the 10 talent themes of the Clifton Youth Strengths Explorer, designed for adults who are interested in accepting, affirming, and growing the individual potential within a child. This series expands your language to describe what is right and strong with children ages 10 to 14. To further your understanding, check out Gallup's book, Strength-Based Parenting, uh, available wherever books are sold. You can get it online as well. Check it out, shop.gallup.com. If you can't find it anywhere, we have it there. Today's theme is caring. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video on both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting and all the cool kids are doing it. It's available off our blog, and we now have the Strengths Explorer logo, album art, and all the right links to do that off the blog. So head over there right now if you want to get subscribed to it, coaching.gallup.com. And if you have any questions, you can email us, coaching at gallup.com. Micah Librant is our host today. She's a workplace consultant here with me at Gallup. Micah, always great to see you, and welcome back to the Strengths Explorer series. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. So excited to get to talk about caring today. Yeah, caring is a good one. And I think this is going to tug on a few heartstrings. This is we think about there's nothing, nothing better than a child. And we see them really caring about others. And so this should be a good one today. Let's dig in, Micah. Give us a little bit of the background and the definition. Yeah, well, and I think in that it, at the, at that point, it's also important to note with all of these themes, just like it is in that adult space, you can, it doesn't mean that if you don't have this theme, you don't care <laughs> about about others. It's just for for kids with caring, they are especially drawn to that idea of helping others. Um, it's about wanting to make the world better by helping individuals, whether that's in a small way or a big flashy way. They really feel good, and I would even go as far as to say probably get even more out of helping other people than than kids without caring. We know in our in the book, Strengths-Based Parenting, there's this idea of strength spotting. We've been talking about that throughout the series and we'll continue to do that. Talk a little bit, how do we see this? How can we spot this caring theme? Yeah, you might notice this show up um, when kids often offer to help others without being asked, without being prompted. Um, this, I think, shows up pretty, you could, it's easier to see if if this kid is around younger children um, because they might really be the first person to say, I'm going to connect with or assist or just be there with other kids. Also with other adults, be that first person to show that, wow, you need something and I want to be the person to give it and, and truly enjoy it, not to feel like that is kind of a chore or even an activity. It's just an extension of what they know to be true, that ability to notice a need and be the fill for that need. Um, they might help other kids who don't want help or, or, don't, or who don't ask for help. There is that, that power in caring kids of being able to say, hey, I see that there is a gap between where you are and, and where you need to be. And I notice that and I, I sense it and I feel it and I want to fill that gap. They might even create ways to help their peers or seek out younger children, knowing that there are specific things that they can do to offer their help and their care. Um, it could transfer onto dolls or animals or pets. It is just this notion that I have something to give and it is um, compassionate and helpful. And as we're talking about this, I'm sure you can already start to hear some adult Clifton strengths themes showing up there. And it's not any one of them. There is a little bit of the sensing of empathy, a little bit of the includer um, as well there. You might also even just hear perhaps even some restorative of that ability to say, I see how there can be a void of compassion or a void of help or a void of care. And I can fill that. Among kids who have high caring, you'll notice that they just radiate joy when they're in their element. And that element is caring for others, helping others, really being sensitive to the emotions of other people. Now, because of that sensitivity, they might really shoulder the weight of a feeling. Um, and that might show through being sad when other people are sad, um, being distressed when other people are in trouble, um, even kind of being there and, and, and feeling with others that could show up as concern for people who are hurting, maybe that they don't even know or, or, or see. I'm reminded of a story of a young child who had caring, who anytime an ambulance would go by would want to stop and say a prayer for whoever it was that was in that ambulance. They, they sense that there is an opportunity to help and they sense a connection to the people who need help. Micah, I love the title of this caring because it doesn't have a direct correlation to any of the themes in Clifton Strengths. 
uh, so many of the ones we've covered so far, you you kind of can see this one to one, and I think we get mm -hmm. lazy that way, yeah. knowing and and I so I think we should treat all of the themes this way when we think about it's not a direct correlation. You had mentioned in this one some relator, some empathy, some I mean, there's mm -hmm. other there's other pieces that come in on this one. So as we think about how this how adults might relate to this talent. Talk a little bit about that, because I think it's key that we broaden this just beyond a one to one relationship. It is. And there are probably three themes out of the 10 that map most directly to adult themes. And it just adult theme sounds racy. <laughs> Not what I meant <laughs> that map most directly to themes within the Clifton Strengths assessment. Um, that's probably alphabetically just the ones that we've been covering so far. Uh, we talked about achieving, we skipped caring, we talked about competing, and now we're back to caring. So if you've been following along with us in a chronological order, the two that we've talked about so far, achieving and competing, map pretty closely to achiever and competition. The third one's probably future thinker and, and futuristic on the Clifton Strength side of things. Because there are a handful, about a third of, of our themes that can go so directly, it's easy to start to fall into that trap of even, I, I like your word, they're kind of getting lazy and trying to think, oh, well, this is mine, so it has to be what this kid has too. And we want to remember that within Strengths Explorer, the way that it's designed and the way that we know it's most helpful is to be significant more broad strokes of talent. You can think about the themes within Strengths Explorer describe more different kinds uh, or, or, or a larger variety, I think, of patterns of feeling and patterns of thought and patterns of behavior that all do have a common thread. Um, within caring, that common thread is relationship building. It is also helping. It is uh, offering of yourself. And it is that sort of sensitivity to something external. So you're probably going to notice a lot of that relationship building talent in there. It's both the ability to sense and to consider. Um, you might even think about that as perhaps a combination of empathy and individualization on, on Clifton Strengths. Um, I'm not saying that those two come together and make this assessment. Again, we didn't uh, derive Strengths Explorer from Clifton Strengths, um, but it is about connecting for connecting with and caring for others in both your your heart and your mind, or it could be maybe just one of those. Um, and and it, important, I think, explore what does caring look like for the child. You know, be curious about what does this, how does caring show up for them. It's important also. The reason we even address this is because we want to help you see yourself in them or help you see where you have some similarities and name where you have some differences. But don't get so lost in trying to map this or figure it out or have a formula for it that you forget to take that early and often opportunity just to stay curious about what caring looks like in the child that you're working with. Micah, Kelly asked an interesting question in the chat room. Can kids care about more than just people? What about things like ideas, pets, movements, some of those kinds of things, ideas? Caring is an emotional theme. Um, so it, it, yes, there is some emotion around that, but I wouldn't go as far as to say it's, it's excitement about ideas that might live more in some of the other themes. I'm thinking about discoverer specifically. This caring element has a uh, has a relationship standpoint to it, which is why I'm going to steer us away from that, like caring about ideas. Now you might, it, it, I don't want you to confuse caring the theme with enthusiasm. Um, and, and I think that that probably is an experience that all kids have, right? You're enthusiastic or, you know, what are your hot buttons? What can you talk about ad nauseum? What, what really lights you up? That's something that's a clue to all of our talent themes for children specifically with the caring theme, I think what lights them up, what makes them excited, the ideas that they are really kind of turned on and accelerate toward is going to be that, how can I help? How can I, how can I be there for somebody who needs me? That's a great description. You know, kids hear everything. It's amazing. If we don't know that, if you don't know that as a parent, they do, right? They hear everything you say. What kind of words, as we think about positive ways to influence, what kind of words can we use or should we be using as we're maybe spotting this or to encourage it? Yeah, caring kids are inclusive. They are devoted. Um, you might think about a kid with caring as being a nurturer, uh, a cheerleader, supportive, comforting, giving. Micah, we've always said that this podcast is really designed for adults. And so we want to spend some time thinking like you may or may not want to play this for your children. But as we think about what information can you do once you've seen this, spotted this, think you might see it there, what are some things that you can do? 
uh, with a child like this. I think if you if you do play it for your children, do it through a mode of transparency of this is something I know, this is something I care about, what do you think, right? Always remember that your client, whether they are nine to 14 or older than that, um, they know more about their talent than you do. <laughs> so it, on that piece, use this as a starting point. Say, you know, what do you think? How does this, how does this relate to you? Um, once we've got this information about specifically a caring child, it's an opportunity just to say, hey, I'm devoted to learning more about you, to learning more about your talent. Um, great opportunities to learn more about talent happen better when we're prepared to have those. So um, here's a couple questions that you could keep sort of in your hip pocket, maybe even write them down, maybe even plan a certain day or a certain time of day that you're going to ask them to your kid. So instead of just saying, how was your day? Here's a couple ideas. If you've got a caring kid, you could say, what kind of feelings did you notice today? Who needs our love this week? How would you like to help our family? What is the best way you show you care? Uh, and if you need more than that, try the easiest, the fastest, the most fun way to show you care. Um, how do others care for you? Um, and who have you noticed showing kindness and how did they show it? You, you know, you mentioned these questions that we have. And and I always, uh, when I was working with, with um, future pastors when I was in college, we always used to say you would speak from your overflow, right? That you would, if you go into, if you're ready, if you're prepared, if you've done your homework, and you're speaking to some individuals and you know your information inside and out, then when you have those moments, those moments to share, those moments to do whatever, mm -hmm. teach, that those things will pour out of you. It's, you don't have to find them or dig for them or get them. And, and let me encourage you, the listener here, to think through, like, if you're seeing this in your children or the children you're working with, right, they don't even have to be your children, just children you influence. To have these questions, Micah, that you just laid out that we have available, to have those so well known that they come from your overflow, that you yeah. don't have to conjure them or, and, 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 you know, if you need to write them down and carry them in your pocket, hey, that's great too. But to really become a student of those questions, to become, to have them studied to the point where they, they come out, uh, and, and it's, I, I would say for all of these that as you're working with students or you, as you're working in this area with your own children, that a lot of these should and can come from your overflow and you've studied and become kind of a, a master of your students' talents, your children's talents. And then these discussions happen without maybe necessarily having to prepare for it. Does that make sense? I love that. I also love that, you know, maybe a little bit, I don't want to guide people thinking that they can master the talent without the without the kid there, right? Like the kid is the master. You can you can know everything there is to know. And I think so it's it's about two things. It's about knowing the content, knowing what's facts and I mean, maybe just the simplicity of how do we define caring or competing or confidence, um, what kind of questions might help, might speak to your kid about yeah. that or might light them up around there. But more than that, it's it's about rooting yourself in your own values and your own mission as to why you're doing this. Yeah. And you can't go wrong if you remember, like, you know, here's here's what I hope to provide to this kid. Here's what I hope to help them avoid by doing this. Here's what I desire. And a lot of that comes back to uh, the essence of strengths-based development, which is really where we root all of our understanding around strengths-based parenting. It is a belief in talent, a belief that everyone has something to give and that that is different and that the, to shortcut it, it's it's that the, the quickest way to success is not how anybody else has done it, but it's about understanding who you are, what you have to give and what you need in order to give that. And I think if you are filling up, I love this overflow, speak from your overflow. If you're, if you're filling up your preparation with a little bit of knowledge about the tool and a whole lot of clarity on your mission, then that overflow is going to be honest and authentic and really allow your kid to teach you about them. Yeah. And I, and I think as we think about how we affirm, we can affirm through that overflow, not just ours, but through theirs as we mm -hmm. see this pouring out. Uh, from them and when it's going well. Can you talk a little bit more about that? How can we help uh, affirm a, a child who's, who's uh, see, where we're seeing this caring? Sure, sure. I think help them understand what the most fertile environment is for their care. Um, 
it's likely that if you've got a caring child, they're caring all over the place, right? They're caring for dolls and pets, like we said before. They're caring for people who might even not know that they're caring for them. Um, help them hone that in. Help them make sure that the recipients of their help need it and want it and notice it. So two ways that you can do that. First is think about being a role model for how to make a great introduction. Shake hands when they're watching you with other adults, with other kids, um, or whatever's culturally appropriate. You know, sometimes you don't touch, but demonstrate using people's names um, and offering clear ways that you can help. That is one, I think, skill that is a multiplier of the talent that a, a child with caring is going to be even better if they can master that. Because what it does is it sets up, in, in coaching, we would call that, you know, defining the contract or asking for permission, but it sets up that ability to say, this child already sees you. This child already notices what you need. Let's make that overt connection by learning how to have a great handshake. Um, the second thing you can do is help your child name the cues that people are giving them that show them that they want to help or help them name perhaps gentle ways that they can respond to those cues. How can they offer care and love? Is it safe? Um, I think about even my very first job, I was a lifeguard. And I think about some of the first things that we have to do in a crisis is first, you have to assess the environment and make sure that it's safe before you go in and then ask somebody if they're okay and can you help. And I think that's a skill as well that you want to cultivate within caring children is, is this going to be safe for me and them? And can I present myself as a great help? Because that will accelerate the, um, the caring that they're able to do. You want to Sorry, going? there's more. <laughs> I just realized I, I have a whole other page of notes on this. Um, the other thing I would want adults with caring children or not, it doesn't have to be your children, but if you're caring for a caring ch child, one thing I want you to know is the more you care for them, the more they're able to care for others. I'm not suggesting that you don't care about your kid, but the more you offer help to them, the better they're going to be able to cultivate that ability to offer help to others. So recognize their compassion. Depending on their age or their situation, it might be as simple as saying, you're doing a really good job at taking care of the puppy. Um, or it might just be, hey, I noticed that you reached out to that kid who was sitting alone at lunch and that really had a significant effect on them. Thank you for doing it. Um, we are not, uh, we're going to fix the fact that we are a, rec a recognition poor society by the time that these kids enter the workforce. I'm confident about it. We're at least going to get better at it, but start to have that habit in recognizing their compassion and doing it out loud in a way that makes sense to them. I would also say model great assistance to them. Um, you might even say, hey, I see that you're frustrated. Can I help? Or you've taken great care of your friend. What can I do for you today? This really, we didn't plan this, but Jim, your idea of overflow makes me think you can't pour from an empty vessel. Your caring kid or your caring student can give a whole lot more of their, what they have to give when they're also filled themselves. Got the opportunity this morning to hang out with three individuals who really were the behind the scenes uh, masters of the Gallup Learning Series. Many of our certified coaches got an opportunity to go through that series and be a part of it. And I could not, Micah, yeah, they're adults and they've got their top five and some other things. But as I think about the way they care about the community and their service uh, goes behind the scenes because they're more interested mm -hmm. in doing the work than a guy like me who's more interested in being out front. You'll never meet them. Well, maybe never. You might meet them at the summit. But they're more, as we as we talk about it, their world is more wrapped up in making sure people have the right information, that they're registered, that they they're having the right experience, that they're right. All these, when we think about that behind the scenes and how great it was to be able to recognize some of them this morning in those in that context and say, hey, thank you for doing mm -hmm. that. And I think, you know, you mentioned recognition. I think it's really important when we spot that to keep that fire burning because we, we live in a world that wants to squash that fire. It wants to kind of put it out and just and extinguish it. And we can do so much with recognition on this. We can do so much by calling it what it is and encouraging mm -hmm. it and not letting it get squashed by some of the things that we do. So I think we have some things you can do to keep that fire going. So as we think about some challenges, Micah, as we think yeah. about working from our overflow and keeping it going, what can here's, folks do? 
here's the go do it. Uh, two pieces if you're uh, an adult who cares for a caring child. Number one, I'm going to call find people that your child can help. So everyone in your ecosystem is a potential growth opportunity for a caring child because the child's going to notice what they need and how they can help them. So seek the opportunity to three steps before your child does. Um, it'll be a good exercise in putting on your own goggles that say, okay, how can I see the world through the lens of care that my that my kid sees the world? So look for siblings, friends, teachers, classmates, neighbors, really just look for people who your kid can help. Um, and number two, your, your second challenge is to help your child expand the language that they have to describe emotion. Help your kid learn and then identify three different emotions in their world. Um, three that they didn't know today. By next week, they should know three more. And, and depending on their age, you might look for things that are more or less obvious. Um, maybe it's how can you tell when someone is sad? Or maybe it's how can you tell when someone is lonely? What does tired look like? What does angry look like? What does afraid look like? Um, these are all good, uh, but I think it's important to realize that different ages and different situations are going to have different clues. So I don't want you to take sad and think, oh, that's only for my nine-year-old, right? I want you to maybe maybe you work with your your middle school or your 14-year-old at the upper end of Clifton uh, Youth Strengths Explorer and say, okay, what does sad look like among your friends? Uh, and so you're really helping them hone that awareness from something that's internal to something that they can now strategize about and ideally something that they can share with others. Yeah, it's it's one of these themes, I think, because it's relational and heavily relational and has some dangers. They all have some dangers, but where I, I think the adults can be particularly helpful yeah. in guiding in guiding them through this, not dictating, right, but guiding. And I think uh, as you're talking about expanding their language for describing emotion, also you know, maybe be brave enough to develop an agreement for what your child can offer when he or she notices these emotions in others. And that is really the kind of the bonus third challenge, right? Really, we just want to say, help them, help them have better words to talk about what other people are needing. Um, and then that bonus is let's also discuss what's, what's worked best for us. What are our most, uh, you know, our greatest successes in helping or in caring? What do we um, expect to change in the world when we do this really well? Um, and perhaps what do we do when it's somebody we can't help? Who who should we come to? How can we be a great voice to still get them the help they need, even if we can't fill that void? Yeah, no, super great. Anything else you'd say as we kind of wrap this up for today? It's such a beautiful theme. I think it's really easy with a word like caring in Strengths Explorer, uh, similar to words like empathy in Clifton Strengths, that if you don't have it, you somehow feel like something is wrong. Um, remember that this is describing a specific set of talents. It's it's not an outcome. So your competing child can be compassionate, right? Your achieving child can show they care. They, every child has access to love and to give love, right? And they want to. Um, what's special about caring children is that they start the day that way, right? They wake up looking for opportunities where they can help, where they can be there for people, where they can reach out. And so it's our job to just stay curious about that and, and to be there kind of right next to them, kind of holding their hand and helping them make the most of it. Well, with that, we'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments. So we've got plenty of room if you want to we have not really, Micah, talked about blogging about this. We spent a lot of time blocking around uh, Clifton Strengths. But if you got some ideas, you want to send those in to us, send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. You can also catch the resources. Uh, they're available, both recorded and downloadable audio. We call that podcasting for offline listening, if you want to make that available. If you haven't made the jump from the Theme Thursday channel, stay, stay, uh, you know, stay subscribed over there. We're going to continue to come back to that. But this Strengths Explorer series now has its own podcast channel. So you can find that. I put the links in the resources page at coaching at gallop.com. You can search Strengths Explore, all one word, in any of the podcasting apps, and you can get these on a regular basis as we produce them. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup, a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, or you want to see all of our courses that are available around Strengths, so you can view them, courses.gallop.com. Don't forget, many of those courses are going to be discounted 10% through the summit. Uh, right now, the Clifton Strengths Summit scheduled for June 4th, 5th, and no, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, there we go, here in Omaha of 2019. And uh, uh, there's about 15 days left before the prices go up. So if you haven't registered to come to the summit, 
Now is the time to get it done. CliftonStrengthSummit.com. We just put all the breakouts out there last night. They're all available for you. Now is the time to act. Head out. CliftonStrengthSummit.com and get that done today. Join our Facebook group to continue the conversation. Facebook.com slash group slash called to coach. All one word. We'll get you in as well. If you're listening live, stay around. We got another one of these coming up as we do a back-to-back. If you're listening to the recorded version, it's probably already in the feed. With that, we'll say (laughs) goodbye, everybody.